lately we have been talking a lot about forge welding and I've talked a little bit about fluxes but I haven't talked much about flux spoons and how you apply the flux to the piece you're working on. You, know, you can certainly with a lot of these I just keep borax in this uh, little tin here so it can sit by the forge you can sprinkle that on with your fingers but some of this stuff like when I'm making an axe or fro that's a big hunk of hot steel and that to get close enough to sprinkle it on is a good way to burn your fingers so a spoon allows you to sprinkle it on and keep your hands at a distance this is nothing special it's a simple tool but it is a real handy one to have when you're welding not absolutely critical and I have a longer one for even bigger work than I really want to stay back from the, the hot material a flux spoon also allows you to flux in the fire with a coal fire you can actually clear a little coal away leave the piece in the fire put the flux on it's not a habit I'm in but it's probably a good habit because it is more efficient that way not all fluxes have to go on that way the borax either the laundry borax or the sodium borate I buy from an industrial supplier that is anhydrous so there's no moisture in it and it's a little better than the borax because it doesn't foam up and bubble so bad but they're both basically the same thing these you have to to use a spoon or sprinkle on and so does the easy weld because it comes in a little can the iron mountain flux I like it because it's got the squirt bottle and you don't really need a need a spoon for it so it's pretty handy by the way if you're using borax or some other flux that comes in large quantities putting some in a tin like this is really handy this is just an old Johnson's paste wax tin with a shop made good heavy lid that stays on it keeps the dirt and the dust out and keeps your bigger container of flux from being vulnerable on the edge of the forge from either burnt melted or just knocked on the floor there is no magical correct proportions for a flux spoon these are probably about a teaspoon perhaps a little bit bigger you just don't need all that much how you make it really doesn't matter it's the fact that it's got a scoop that you can scoop flux in is the only part that's critical the shape doesn't matter how you do the handles just doesn't really matter these are both a little bit different so we're just going to make a a quick flux spoon and show how it can be done and I'm going to start with a piece of quarter by half inch flat bar that is way too long and that gives me something to hold on to and we'll cut it off when we get closer to the spoon we want I want to go for a handle about 10 to 12 inches long and I want to taper it thin right next to the bowl and then wider out towards the handle more like a a cooking or an eating spoon might be to start by shouldering it at the edge of the anvil here want a nicely defined shoulder here and that's where the spoon will start and then I want to thin this out now I'm going to leave it quarter inch thick here by about quarter inch wide so quarter inch square right at the shoulder and I'm going to make it thinner and wider as we go out which is what it wants to do anyways now to draw this out I am going to use this big four pound diagonal peen hammer it's got one peen set up to go this way one peen set up to go that way I made this before I had a power hammer because it is so effective for drawing stuff out now it's going to leave a bunch of peen marks and we'll go back with a flat hammer and clean that up but it is definitely giving us the shape I'm going for I may be done with this hammer we'll smooth that back out and clean up this edge let that get too far out of control 
it gets thin and it doesn't clean up very easily. That's pretty much what I'm going for. I said I wanted to go about 10 inches long or so. And I'm at 8 inches to where the bowl starts. So I think I'm going to try and draw that just a little bit more. And then it'll be about 10 inches overall. So mostly it's a matter of cleaning up the forging. But there's a little bit more drawing out we can do. This isn't quite quarter inch square here, it's a little bit wide still. And I want to lightly chamfer the edges up here so it's more comfortable. Like I say the exact size doesn't matter much unless you need something really long to stay away from bigger material. So I'm very happy with that. Let's see if it's even close to what I was aiming for. We're at eight and a half inches, so we're we're probably not going to quite make the ten inches I was after to start with. That's okay. I, I like the shape, so I'm going to stick with it. I started with 5 inches of material and didn't quite double. So if you wanted it 10 inches, probably if you started with 6 inches, you'd be a lot closer. But taking note of these things is one way you learn how materials behave and how much you're going to get out of everything. That's a good way to educate yourself on what your materials are going to do. This is cooling off fast because the anvil is pretty cold. It's about 20 degrees today and even though I've been working big heavy bars that were good and hot, the anvil has not warmed up a lot. And I think the neck right up next to the bowl I want to round. Now, I had no idea what this was going to look like when I decided to do it. This is 100% made up on the spot. So we got that octagon for about three inches and now I'm just going to round up the first inch, inch and a half. And straighten everything out. Go ahead and punch a hole in this so we can hang it up on a nail next to the forge. Helps if you go over a plate with a hole in it, a bolster plate. This is a heading plate, but it works just as well. And that doesn't deform your material as bad as driving it through the much bigger Pritchell hole. So there's our hole. Now I'm going to sink this down into a swedge just a little. Just give it a little half round on what will be the front side. Just so happens this big diagonal peen hammer fits very nicely in there. Try 
trying to even that up. I'll probably take a file to it and clean it up just a little bit. So there's our handle. Now I'm going to cut off the part for the spoon. This is half inch wide material so I'm going to cut it off about three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to cut mostly from the sides and that'll help start to round up my my end. Gets rid of the corners right off the top here. Now I'm going to break it off so it doesn't shoot across the shop. Now I'm going to start prepping this to be the shape I want. I'm going to make it kind of oval and I want to make sure I got a decent shoulder and I want the edges knocked down. And the other thing I want to do is put a slight bevel in front and back so that it's thicker in the middle. That means it'll widen out when I paint it, it'll widen out more in the middle. Okay, now I'm just going to cross peen this. I'll probably have to do some trimming. This is going to be way bigger than I need. But I want it pretty thin. But I'll have plenty of material here to trim this. This is more of a tablespoon size spoon and I just don't think you need that much for flux. It would encourage you to put too much on. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim that down and make a smaller spoon out of it. And I'll just go do that off camera. It's just a matter of filing, grinding, a little bit of work under a Beverly shear, cold chisel it if you need to, whatever you got, whatever works. So I did a little filing off camera. I got this kind of smoothed up and cleaned up. It doesn't need it. It just I felt like doing it, so I did it. And I put two little decorative lines down in here. And my touch mark is now on there. So now it's time to shape the bowl. Now we've seen this stump before and shaped shovel pans and candle holders on it. And I've got a little round depression right there from doing something. That'll be just fine for our spoon. Think about the the angle of the neck as it comes into the spoon. You might want to just clean it up from the back a little bit. Well, you can do a fair amount of this cold. Don't get too carried away because it starts to work harden a little bit. And you can crack it as you go. I kind of like that shape. Well, I think I've done plenty of fiddling for a flux spoon. This is almost suitable for an eating spoon. So I'm going to let that cool a little bit. I think I'll give it a quick power wire brushing just because I'm fiddling with it so much. And I think it's really make it look good. And then we're going to put some paste wax on it and take a look at it. There are lots of options you can use for finishing ironwork. And we'll do a whole video on some of those. I just like the Johnson's paste wax because it's easy. And I found it to be quite reliable. But there are other Paste wax is meant for hardwood floors. It would probably work just as well. Pure beeswax works. Beeswax and linseed oil. In fact, just straight linseed oil as long as you don't get too much on there. So I just put that on and let it kind of melt in. I wipe it off with a rag. Get the excess off. 
Then we'll let that cool. So here's our little flux spoon all finished. It ended up shorter than I had originally planned, I think. I was going to go for, well, it's right at 10 inches. So it's right at the short end of what I was looking for. But that's still long enough to be perfectly suitable for putting on flux. I got really carried away in making it pretty. You absolutely don't need to do that, but you'll be way more proud of your tools if you take the time to make them special. And this, if you don't put paste wax on, if you use beeswax or an edible oil finish, you could actually use this in the kitchen for something. That would be a nice little scoop for spices or something to get them out of a jar or maybe, maybe stir your coffee with. You could even eat with a spoon like this if you wanted to. So you don't have to make a flux spoon if you're not forge welding. You can make some other kind of a spoon. But I was just having fun with it, so I went with it. These were much simpler. I, I hammered these out a lot faster. You could actually even do this with quarter inch square bar. And since you're learning to forge weld, faggot weld the end over to give yourself twice as much material and then spread that out. The weld might shear, but if you get lucky and everything goes right, it'll be a real fast, simple way to create something more like this. I hope you found that an enjoyable little project. I hope it's something you can go out in your shop and make. This probably didn't take oh, seven inches total of that quarter by half flat bar. So it's pretty simple to make. If you've got tongs, you can start with a little piece. If you don't, start with a long piece and cut it off like we did. And you've got enough material here to hold on to while you work it. You can make these any way you want to. You can make bigger spoons for cooking spoons. You can make long flux spoons, short flux spoons. It really doesn't matter. This is all you need to get the job done, except that I went a little overboard in decorating it. But that's part of the fun of blacksmithing. You get to have fun. So I hope you like the video and give it a thumbs up. Love it if you'd hit the subscribe button. Share the videos with your friends. Take a few minutes. Go and watch some of the other videos. Watch somebody else's videos on blacksmithing. There's lots of really good stuff out there. But then head out to the shop. Make something. Enjoy your time in the shop. But stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you for another one real soon.